Hey guys, we're live. Oh, sorry for the mic noise. Mmm, bear with me. I, I feel like the mic's been like moved or something. Something feels off. Maybe it's just the fact that I haven't done this in forever. I know, I was here the other day for like an hour. That was nice. So, welcome back everybody. Hello. It is I. Uh, mostly intact. What's up, Bolo? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Tired, but that has. That's. What else is new? I'm old. Just had my birthday. Another year older. Alright, let me get to... No, I don't want to drop these. Let me get to doing the stuff here with the thing. I am 49 years old now. I absolutely do not feel like it. Hey, Archmage. Do not feel like it. I still feel young. Let's grab these spells. They are old now. Now yeah, we're all getting there, right? Rev said, happy birthday. You'll soon join us in the 50s club. Yeah, I'm excited about that one. I'm looking forward to it. It's fucking weird. <laughs> the idea that I'm the, the idea that I'm almost 50 years old is insane. I honestly I don't I don't know how you feel, but I honestly don't feel much different than my twenties. At all. In any way. Uh yeah, my knees were kinda shit even when I was in my twenties, babe. Jasmine's pointing to my uh, pointing to her knee. I mean my knees make a lot of noise. But not saying they uh, ever felt fantastic. Bananatron, thank you, thank you. Nicodemus, thank you. Video games keep the mind young, our bodies age. Honestly, my body doesn't feel that old. For as beaten up as I am, I don't. I really don't feel. If anything, like, maybe it's a hubris thing. Maybe it's just I'll, I'll learn my lesson soon. Uh, I haven't been on a run in a while, so maybe I'll go on a run soon and be like, I take it all back. I'll come back in and I'll be like, I take it back. You guys are right. I'm old as shit. I'm done. Let me just sit here. But uh, yeah, I'm just, I've got, I've got shoulder surgery in two weeks. So I'll be gone again. Apologies. Um, I don't know how that's going to affect my ability to sit in a chair or do whatever. Um... So we'll see. I just got to the point where typing as of like the last two days, I've been able to just get in and start typing more without much additional pain or whatever. Uh, right now, it just kind of feels like you ever you ever slam your pinky in a like a cabinet or a door, like slam it real good. And it's got that like little burning buzz at the end. That's what I feel right now in my finger. Um, it's just, it feels like I slammed the tip of my pinky in a drawer or in a door. Um, and afterwards when it's just kind of like tingling, it, the only thing is there's no tip of my pinky. So happy 70th birthday bandit says, which is funny that you would come in and, and be a smart ass right out of the gate. Were you being a smart ass earlier? I was, I was scrolling through discord lich and I saw... I saw just in the middle and it's like you weren't even it was almost like a necro you know post where it was where it was like uh no you weren't being a smart ass happy 70th birthday all right let's see I see I got red bitrate again I guess we'll see what happens let me know if it fucks up again um anyways the 
the, the post where they were talking about housing or whatever. And then like, and they've moved on from housing. And then you're like, one way to get to housing is to bum rush in there early during early access. And I was just like, are, are you still on that? Hey, Zugan. Hey, Pattis. Your Discord was scrolled up. You didn't notice. Mm -hmm. Likely excuse. Hmm. Pattis said he had a red bit rate on Monday as well. Okay, my last stream was also this way. And it's okay, Lich. I don't, I don't care. It, I'm just, I'm picking on you for fun. Um, like I said earlier, I think I, I moved my mic or banged my mic or did something with my mic. So if it sounds weird, let me know. Also, let me know if I need to turn the volume down because I'm using in-game, all in-game music and stuff right now. Um, it may be a bit louder than normal. I can, I can bump it a little bit. If you can't, if you can't pick on people on the internet, what are we even doing here? It's fair. Hey, Thadvik. Um, the Sava. Uh, let's see. Fanar, did you come in while I was talking about the pinky? Um, yeah, so anyways, Bananatron, what's going on? Thank you for the happy birthday. Uh, in, on the 2nd of April, I've got shoulder surgery. And hopefully that wraps up all of the injuries from last year. Neck's good again. Finger's gone. Shoulder, we'll see what they do. Um, and uh, And then after that, hopefully, I'll be able to quickly get everything rehabbed hit our weight room we've got our own little weight room um in the guest bedroom we just we don't have guests really when they come in we've got like a wrestling mat that we put a mattress on we're like yeah you can sleep on the when we have guests they can sleep on the wrestling mats um let's see uh yeah so after that get back at it and see if i can uh actually not be all busted to shit by 50. Liz Biscuits. Thank you for the happy birthday, Liz Biscuits. What do I enjoy more? Working on a game from the ground up in the early stages or maintaining adding content to an existing game? Um, they're, you know, they're very different. I've enjoyed coming in on other games a fair bit. Uh, I mean, I came into EverQuest when it was an existing game, and that's still one of the, you know, like, all-time high experiences. Um, working on it from the ground up, working on this one from the ground up is really fun. Working on DC Universe from the ground up was less fun. So. Hey, Sleepy Druid. Uh, where do I... I would... Where was, were we just chatting? Did I just see you somewhere? It says first time chat, but I swear, was it Discord or was it YouTube comments? Or no. Or was it, were you talking about something on Reddit and I was reading a thread? I know the name from somewhere. Comments, Discord, okay. Hey, Sirenth, Shmonite. Possum. Maybe that was it. Maybe it was uh, popping into one of the other streams. Was there a ton of politics with DC working on DC Universe? Not really. DC was pretty easy to work with. So what we did on that one was... Um, we were actually pretty clever at Sony on that. Um, so the, the person that we were going to be working with as like one of the editors that we'd have to deal with at DC Comics, um, she kind of wanted to move to Austin. Like I think her husband uh, had heard that it was like a really cool artsy, because her husband's an inventor and an artist. Um, heard that it was like a really artsy city. And so they decided because she'd only ever lived in New York and LA, that she wanted to move to Austin. So we hired her. She had been at DC Comics for 10 or 12 years. We hired her to become our person who content, like basically worked with the editors at uh, Warner Brothers DC. Um, so we, well, and I think it was, we had some people at DC and we had some people at Warner Brothers. 
Um, and so she actually made it really easy for us to, to, um, to work with folks. She was fantastic. Uh, I really, really loved working with her. Uh, she'd never worked on a game before, but she came in and she was just, uh, really a fantastic person. So if you're out there, Dana, um, wishing you all the best. You were awesome to work with, except for she fucking typed so loud, so loud. She typed like she was wanting to, she was like physically assaulting the keyboard. It was just like, bah, 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 bah. and so we had to have some conversations about her typing. But beyond that, she was, uh, she was an awesome person to work with and uh, a cool friend outside of work. And it was, it was cool to be able to like, at Comic-Con and stuff, be able to sit in on a couple meetings with like, we had, uh, if you're a DC Comics uh, fan, or at least the old DC Comics, had a really fun meeting once at, uh, at uh, Comic-Con where it was like Jeff Johns and Dan Didio and um, Jim Lee was in there and a couple other writers who I feel bad I don't remember. And then um, at some point, some point the meeting finally started um when oh let me see i want to make sure i'm not oh yeah yeah no i'm not bullshit yeah so uh the meeting finally started when grant morrison got there i was like why am i spacing out on grant's name um and that was just a fun meeting to listen to those guys talk um Chip said inventory dolls and rendering. You might want to disable it in settings and then say and then save some FPS. It's slower and editor there in the build. Um, let me check out the settings. I was actually really happy to see the like the background sound setting in here. I don't think I'd used it before. Um, and when I tabbed over it was like uh, Okay. Uh, inventory avatar. Where are I on? You guys are so good about putting this stuff in. And I say that, I say that from my experience working on other games. You guys are, are really stellar. So, to the earlier question of like, what is more fun to work on, JLX? Um, like this, this has just been a very unique project because it is so like, by the seat of our ass, like bootstrap, people volunteering their time, but the guys get so much shit done and when they do stuff they 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 tend to nail the little things it's like you know chip put in this uh you can't see it here because it wasn't working but um for whatever reason it's not working here it was working earlier uh i don't know not earlier today but anyways like you know, we've got the 3D avatar like rendering and stuff in here. You might have seen on other streams. You'll see it in the update. Um, and then boom, you've got the setting to turn it off. Nick asked for a setting. Awesome. And that's the other thing. We've just got... It's, it's being on top of that stuff that's really, really awesome. So whether it's you guys as you're implementing it, because I know Ali's pretty good about that as well and adding tools as we go. Documenting shit, on the other hand, maybe not as much, but we've still got better documentation than I've had on any project. But then, yeah, uh, inevitably Nick or Brandon or one of the guys are really good about, like, essentially QAing and finding this stuff. Uh, those of you that didn't notice the other day, I think we mentioned it, but if you weren't here, we've got another new team member. Um... So he's often in here in chat, uh, telling dad jokes and being a smart ass. So if you see John NS in here at some point, uh, congratulate him. He is helping us on the QA side. Did I say hi to Lasava? I probably did. Um, Fanar said, I need to, I learned I need to take better care of my teeth since I got six of my teeth extracted within a month because I didn't take care of my oral health. Yeah, that's. My wife's a my wife's a dental surgeon, so she comes home some days and she's like, "I took out eight teeth," and it's like a short day. She was there for like an hour. I took out eight teeth. How many people? Two. Oh, 16 You took out today. How many people? Five. Damn. Uh, Siren's recovery is going good. Um, hand is working mostly good so far. 
Uh, I've got to rehab it. There's not a lot of mobility, but I think that's partially because of the swelling and stuff. It's still just getting used to like being missing. Uh, you feel attacked by that comment. What comment? BMC says, happy birthday. Glad to see you back in fighting fit and mostly fit. Uh, I'm so gutted to hear you have <laughs> shoulder surgery. Really miss the streams, chill while I work. Hey, I appreciate that. I'm hoping to, um, it's gonna be one or more of three things that they've got to fix in my shoulder. And I'm really hoping it's just like the first one. Um, Cause the recovery time is supposed to be pretty quick on that. But at the end of the day, I kind of, I don't care as long as my shoulder is awesome afterwards. Um, Jalex says, was DC Universe going to be DC Universe from the very beginning, or did they just want to make a licensed superhero MMO and there's a bidding war DC and Marvel? So uh, I think I'm allowed to say now, and even if, even if I'm not, I'm not quite sure which NDA I'd be breaking. I think the team was originally the team that was potentially going to do a Harry Potter game. And then that just never came to fruition. And then um, from there, it was going to be a, a Marvel Comics game. And then that fell through. And then it wound up being a DC game. And I was uh, I was one of the first like five people on that team. So. Opeth, hello. And you're right, passion project versus just another job is a hell of a difference. It definitely feels like it. Oh, Sarenth, you were talking, I'm scrolling up. I, I just realized based on Liz, Liz's comment, because she said, allegedly my ex hubby swears I type like that. Uh, but this keyboard begs to differ. Maybe you just got a tougher keyboard. Um. Yeah, so I realize you're talking about the keyboard now. Do you keep teeth in the freezer? Is that why my freezer is so secret? I, f I feel like I missed something. Even with the gnome jokes, we, we pulled John onto the team. All right, so <clears throat> for those of you, I'll try to, uh, maybe I'll try to give like a timestamp for um, the VOD. So I was gonna see about doing some actual work work in um, glass flats but I think the zones checked out and I came in really hot today with regards to like just getting on stream and shit. So I figure I'll play some. The gameplay uh, VODs are really popular. People want to see classes in action. Um, so disclaimer, if you're here for that VOD, uh, where am I at? Like 18 minutes in. Okay, if you're here for the gameplay VOD, realize I am playing in editor um, just because a lot of times I do that. It's just faster for me to pop an editor if I want to do work or whatever I can just start doing work as you can see here so my my frame rate's going to be uh, garbage um, <clears throat> it, between streaming being an editor certain optimizations that we need blah 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 my frame rate stays pretty low um, but it runs like two to three times better uh, in the actual client so That'll be one disclaimer. The other disclaimer is, um, yeah, I don't know how well I'll be playing, uh, but that there's nothing new there. Um, so I've mimmed my spells by inabilities, but I actually didn't load any. So we'll mim strike. Um, I should have plenty of arrows. I'm playing a ranger, ogre ranger. Uh, hey, Dark Inside. Run with the Yakuza. I actually looked up the whole ritualistic uh, removal of pinky joints um, that the Yakuza does. Um, I have done nothing wrong, so no need for me to remove it for that reason. But I'll probably, when people ask later, I'll probably say stuff like that. 
Build faster, inevitably somebody's gonna put some random pinky jokes and finger jokes in the game. Um, Banner says, I need to say having my three front teeth extracted was the son of a gun. Uh, way painful to the point it was like 20 on pain level out of 10. I was very fortunate that um, pain level pretty chill on this, which is weird, right? Like, um, I, I wasn't sure what to expect, but it was not... It wasn't bad. Um, the first night when the local anesthetic wore off, my hand throbbed a bit uh, throughout the night. So I, I had a ibuprofen before bed, woke up about three hours later, took one, and then about three or four hours after that, took one again. And I was like, oh, that's a lot of ibuprofen for your stomach. So I um, I ended up, uh, I told the doctors, like, I'm taking a lot of ibuprofen. Um, and they gave me something a bit stronger, but I only needed that in the evening. Each night, uh, you know, hour or two before bed, I took um, a pill that was a bit stronger. And uh, that was that was really it until the last week when I started. I was still taped up, you know, I still had the bandage on. I was trying to type and my, my hands started burning pretty bad. So I had two pain pills a day for like two days and then... <sighs> That's it. We've been good ever since. Not even ibuprofen. <sighs> As for numbing three times, your front teeth is still painful. I hate to hear that, man. That's no fun. Hey, Robert. That's no good. It's never, it's never fun to hear that people had to go through some gnarly dental shit. I don't know what it is about, like, mouth pain or tooth pain that's just so, ugh, oh, to me. Alright, let me start killing some stuff. Oof. What happened there? I think that's all client side. I've got, I'm seeing that I'm compiling shaders still down here. I wonder what all is loading in. I haven't been in playing uh, very much since the surgery, so if you see if we see any like super weird shit, then that's probably just a byproduct of me either not being aware of some change that I would have seen earlier had I been playing, or it's something client side because my janky ass machine. Oh man, seen a lot of weirdness. Well, turnip gin, I had Peruvian last night for my birthday. Um, Jalex Brown says, I really, I'm really fascinated by the business side of making games. Do executives decide what games the studio is going to make before they even build a team? Or do teams get together and pitch ideas to the executive? Um, depending on the company, uh, either one can happen. Um, I've, I mean, I know of instances where they've built entire, they've built studios around a game. I mean, the DC Universe example is actually an example of, it was kind of decided that was the game that was going to be made. And, um, that's what they built a team around. That's what they brought me on for. And then my job right after that, my next job was on a game that never shipped. Um, I... Went to interview for a totally different job, found out they might be looking for a producer for a project later that year, uh, wound up interviewing for that instead. They didn't tell me what the project was, but it was a, um, it was going to be a, a kids MMO, superhero kids MMO, and they wound up hiring me because I just left DC after working on a superhero MMO for five years um and then once they hired me they're like surprise it's a superhero mmo and essentially we would have been building up uh around 
a team, you know, around that. But that's not really building a company, right? Or a studio. Yeah, that was a stupid example. Um, but no, I guess not, because the executives had decided that was the game that was going to be made. So it is a relevant example. I fucking I take it back. Kappa said, "What happened to your pinky?" Um, I jacked up my hand and uh, tore the tendons under on the bottom. So the top tendon was just basically ripping my finger backwards and. I could have either gotten my, my pinky frozen like this and it'd always be in the way, or I could have um, had a couple surgeries to try to make it partially mobile. Uh, so I just asked them to cut it off instead, and they obliged. Dark Insight said I got a new Alienware 51 X51 PC for 200 bucks as a backup, and got new internet, one gig. Awesome. You sound like you're set. Maybe one of these days I'll get a new. A new machine but uh, I think it's good for me to just keep this one one because I already own it and so it's cheaper um, but two it's probably better for some people on the team to have kind of outdated PCs uh, so that we can always kind of be aware of like optimizations we need etc I think, I don't think that lag was just client lag. I think there's something weird going on right now. Yeah, look at that weird little landing and shit. I don't know if that's because of something on my end or what, but I guess we'll see. Um, wow. Not showing super well here, guys. Flee. I don't know that a snake would flee. I think a snake will fight to the death. Huh. I wonder if anybody else is... Guys, are any of the rest of you in-game? Funky Note said, Just saw the YouTube video of your first stream back. I'm glad to hear surgery went well. Oh man, I appreciate it. Um, pretty impressive you have access to Peruvian food out here. Germans like their Peruvian food. Um, Saren says, oh, thanks, Pessimistic Squid. Never had issues with my extraction, but I have five front removed partial in. Only had to use ibuprofen twice and that's it. Need to get more removed. Cost of not taking my care of my teeth and my youth and heavy smoker. Yeah. If we could go back and tell our younger selves. Your wife still has a baby tooth that was never pushed out by her adult tooth. It's still there, but her baby tooth was... It's still in there, but her baby tooth was removed. So the baby tooth was removed, but then her normal tooth is like still embedded in her skull. Hey, Dozakar. Hey, Simon. Chinny D, we gotta get that number up, buddy. <laughs> 12.5 oozins per second. Yeah, I ordered something the other day. The guy was like, oh my gosh. So sorry to hear about your finger. And then he asked me how many of something I wanted. And I said four. And he... Because <laughs> my hand was bandaged. And, uh... He just busted out laughing and then apologized. Um, you're the weird gnome. Zukin, have you seen anything like rubber banding or anything? Is, is stuff... Like, is it the same on your screen as it is on my screen? Here, I'll fight something and see what happens. Especially since that something's wearing a something, I think. Yeah, did you just see that right there? Or is that a byproduct of like my internet or something? Look, at he's wearing a hood. Come here, Ludi. We getting some lockup stutters? Okay, cool. Um, hey, Enduro. Uh, let's see. Okay, good to hear it's not just on my end then. Um, 
I am curious. Playing an ogre, you definitely want to be first person. Can't see anything around her. Oh man, I gotta sneeze so bad. Um, so there was a question about phantom pain up here. I, I saw it, but I haven't had a chance. Um, Belfast said, no phantom pain reminds me of a very old coast to coast AM radio show where they were talking about some form of spiritual amputation so the mind would accept the change better in some cases. It's interesting that they were talking about that because I think it, it makes a bit of sense based off what I've read and experienced. So I will say, um, when I was getting some pain or sensations in my finger when I first got like that first week. I was getting a lot of phantom sensations. I don't know that I'd call it pain, but a lot of sensations. And if I just, if I just do this, if I wiggle all my fingers, a lot of the sensations would disappear from my pinky, right? Like if I basically try to mirror the movement, like mentally, not even, not even really putting much effort into mirroring it physically but if i just kind of went like this then my my finger would just i would stop having the sensations um and so now that it's healed up more the one thing that i've noticed is there have been a couple times where i've tried to use it uh shift key a couple times and oh yeah it's not there went to pick my nose the other day um you know just being honest with you guys like we try not to we're not bullshitting you here on m and So, for real, you know, if you're sitting here working on a game, no one's here. Jasmine's at work. I was going to, you know, get in there a little bit. And, like, was like, oh, man. Not there. So, that was kind of funny. Um, and so, I was describing this to somebody earlier today. Uh, um, and the one thing that I will say is kind of interesting with it is... Uh, and... I will, it, it's definitely helped me, um, it's definitely helped me really consider the, you know, because a, a lot of the people I follow on um, Instagram and things like that are uh, veterans and uh, a number of them have had like some pretty gnarly amputations um, just from like IEDs and stuff like that. And... It, it never really dawned on me until this thing's gone. I was telling Jasmine about this the other day. Like, I don't feel, I don't feel bad that I got it amputated. I don't, like, there's no, absolutely zero pity party kind of shit. There's zero, like, uh, um, I asked that they, you know, I requested it because I didn't want the alternative of it just not functioning. Um, and it, like I said, it's not traumatic. It hasn't really hurt, you know, much or whatever, but it, it my brain kind of was started telling me the other night like i can i can touch things right like with all my other fingers and my brain was like for whatever reason really locked into the idea that i'll never feel anything with this this finger again and it was like this weird sort of like um what what would be the term for that it's not it is almost like this this uh, sort of forelonging kind of or forlorn sort of like oh man, well I guess that's never gonna happen again. But it's like it's my pinky. <laughs> like how often you think about like oh I touched something with my pinky today. It's not like my eyes or it's not like you know whatever ears or whatever. Sarinth, have a fun meeting. See you, buddy. Um, yeah, if you gotta lose a finger, the pinky's the best bet. If you gotta lose anything, the pinky's the best bet. Like, pinky toe would have been way more of a pain in the ass. Like, it's it's harder to not walk on your, you know, not walk for a few days than it is to not use your hand, right? Um, John said, yeah, because John had some finger issues. We talked about this before the, uh, the, the, you know, surgery and after and stuff. 
John said, I can relate to that. There's an odd feeling when something like a finger was there working for 30, 40 years, and then it just doesn't. Yeah, it's like the first thing on me, I think, where it's just like, oh, that's just, that's done. <laughs> you know, it's like, ah. Uh. But, and this will sound cheesy to a lot of you, and I don't want to turn anybody off, and I, I'm not going to get preachy or whatever, but the other thing that it kind of reinforced to me, because I, I don't really do that here, I don't think if you've been watching for, you know, years, I haven't gone down this trip with you, but the other thing that it was the first thing to kind of reinforce as well is like, oh, you know, based on my belief, like when I die, I'll be whole again in heaven. So I was like, oh, all right, well, I'll see you again later, buddy. Have fun in pinky heaven. <laughs> Just like, whatever. Uh, so yeah, it was weird. A melancholy is a, you know, I think that's appropriate, it's is like this weird melancholy. This said, it's the grieving process. And in a weird sort of small way it is, right? So yeah, I don't wanna, I'm a, you know, anybody who watches the stream, the poor team, they watch the stream, they're like, why does he never talk about the game and shit? He's always talking about random shit that's not the game. <laughs> I feel bad. But yeah. How does the pinky get from pinky heaven to heaven heaven? Oh, I think the rest of you's gotta arrive there. It just stays in pinky heaven for a while. Hanging out with, like, the doggos and stuff, and then when you arrive, they're like, hey! He's here now, and everybody's like, oh shit, get on the bus. Pinky Purgatory. Oh man, don't say it. Poor Pinky. Pinky Limbo. And then Liz comes out with the worst one. It's like a parcel held at the post office. That's even worse than Limbo. Pinky Torgy. Pinkatory. There we go. It's in Pinkatory. Zukin's um, working on UV fixes on the characters and stuff. You'll see it in an update. So if you see anything odd here, it's in progress. Zukin, are you aware of my of my lady, lady ogre head sticking through here? Maybe ghost sensation is the pinky trying to reach you from the spirit realm. See a psychic. Well, if it suddenly reappears, like, if I'm out one day and all of a sudden I start getting, like, spider spider senses tingling in my pinky, then I'm going to look around. It's kind of like whenever I'm walking Rune at this point, when I'm walking my pup. If he starts looking around, I know he's, he's sm like, smelled or seen something, so I look around too. Idea, a dungeon where you fight severed limbs and then the boss at the end is huge, massive limbs stitched together. <clears throat> I forget what movie I saw that made me want to put that in a game a long time ago. I think it might have been Jeepers Creepers. Um, Chip, you said something about, oh, it was because we were using default attacks. If I use something like Strike, it's just a cast animation. Okay, that's, I remember. I read it in... It went in my brain, but I didn't read. I didn't read it out loud. The other thing is, um, when it was bandaged, I thought I was going to have more of a problem with it, but now that the bandage is off, I don't feel the sensation as much. There was this sensation of it being trapped because I couldn't really move it. And I, despite um, doing jujitsu for a long time, I'm, I'm oddly claustrophobic. I've learned to not be claustrophobic when I'm rolling, um, though when I went back recently, I did hit at least one moment where it like hit me, um, but I, I, I can recognize it and I just, I know how to power through it. But like, I, I am definitely claustrophobic. Um, and I think it's less about, because I'm rarely in a situation where I can really be claustrophobic, but that idea of being trapped somewhere where you just can't mm, free yourself um, is not, high on my list 
Um, so I, I was feeling that a bit in my hand. I was like, I felt oddly claustrophobic. Putting yourself under a blanket is a good test. Oh, I don't mind that part. Uh, it's mainly like, um, so not that kind of claustrophobic. Just that like if I watch somebody wiggle into a tunnel or something, I'm like, I don't think I'd enjoy that. The Nutty Putty Cave incident, uh, I, I saw a video on like Instagram about it and uh, yeah, like that, that sort of stuff where you, people wiggle into areas and they can't get back out as well. This said, uh, as I've gotten older, my claustrophobia used to only be in busy shops. And now my dogs can do it to me, which is sad. They don't understand, so I need them <laughs> off and away. Um, yeah, it's a bummer. Is it something you've tried to work through mentally? Hey, Sanguine. Uh, sanguine, sorry. Um, so the, the finger thing, um, that you're saying the dungeon earlier, you know, one of the coolest, one of the coolest creatures in classic EQ was the disembodied hand. I could, I could definitely see a disembodied finger mob being kind of cool. And if we ever do a disembodied hand, maybe Zukin will have a, have one that looks like this in honor of the pinky. Uh, MRIs don't bother me, actually. So maybe I'm not claustrophobic. Maybe I'm full of shit. Like, MRIs don't don't really bother me. Um, just because I, I know I can get back out easy, right? Like... Textures are looking nice. Hey, stuff has been coming along. Thank you, Enduro. Lag seems to have settled down. Wonder if it has something to do with things spinning up. Um, we'll, we'll see if it keeps happening here. New item, finger of the auton auton I'll never say that word probably. Autonaton. Jasmine laughs at me on this one, I think. There's a handful of words that... Aut automaton. Oh, man. Here, I'll point to it. Oh, that's a cool example one. That duck. <clears throat> one point I was worried the machine was going to explode with me trapped in there. I, yeah, the MRIs really haven't bothered me. The first time I got one, I was worried about like having cheap inks in my tattoos react to it. And then I've had so many since then that it's not. Not been a bother. Oh, I'm a I'm a ranger. Why am I not using auto fire? That I'm just I'm not even gonna. I don't know. I'm gonna I'll post the vod, but I'm not even gonna post it like it was a uh, gameplay vod. Because apparently, and I'm not gameplay. I had to take out all them non visible piercings. Um, fun fun fact: I actually had a non visible piercing for a surgery when I was in the army. Yep. And I did not take it out until they were prepping me. And it wound up being... We had a lot of fun. We just laughed and laughed and laughed. Because that's the kind of stuff you do when you're in the army. Oh my. Yeah.
we we allow our team to have their unique personalities on stream. We don't have a we don't have an HR department. We don't have a PR department. So sometimes you know we're not the most appropriate. What you gonna do? Wait, I have a quiver. Why don't I just put these in the quiver? I got cloth scraps in the quiver. No HR department's the only reason why you signed on. That's not the only reason. John, you know you wanted to get close to us. Rawr. Uh, level one line said, I wouldn't call myself claustrophobic, but those cave diving videos make my skin crawl. Dude, I hate them so much. Uh, no HR department yet. By the time we need an HR department, I'm hoping chat GPT-4 is uh, good enough. We no longer need lawyers. We have a lawyer on staff. We have our own, we have our own legal counsel on staff. His name is Chad GPT. <laughs> no, we actually do. One of our one of our team members is like a full fledged legit lawyer, badass corner office and everything. I would not hire him if I were you, because apparently all he does all day is work on M and M. But you know, badass lawyer. I've seen I've seen I've been on a video call with uh, with this individual. And he is flexing. He had his he has he had his camera facing the city skyline from his corner office. I'm like, damn. I was calling him sir. <laughs> like, well sir, if you don't mind doing some work today, that'd be awesome. Even M's lawyer? He might be. We didn't discuss clients. That's uh that's client lawyer privilege. Also, lawyer-client privilege, or one of the—it's a—it's a privilege. Uh, no, I didn't want to come here, and I keep doing that. I don't know why I do that. Oh my gosh, my 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 WASD hand is always in the wrong spot. Now I'm doing all sorts of weird shit. Don't sue them, guys. That's the opposite of crowdfunding. We would sue you. How did you guys pay for your game? Uh, we just sued the community. <laughs> Repeatedly. We found all sorts of reasons to sue the community. Enduro gave us the idea. Ah, oh, man, when we do, when we do the voices for the female ogre, she's got to have like a, she's got to have a deep husky voice. When she, when she gets injured, it's, it's got to sound almost, uh, I'll just stop right there. I keep I keep forgetting I'm playing a ranger, so I'm like running up to shit. I'm definitely not gonna mention that I played a ranger in this spot. We're gonna we're gonna play a ranger soon when the rubber banding's not so bad. Um and I'm playing the the build instead of in the editor. And I can remember that I'm a ranger so I can actually shoot at range. Morgan Freeman's voice for the female ogre. We're gonna get Morgan Freeman's voice for the so voice of Dungeon Master.
Thought Snoop Dogg was the voice of Dungeon Master. I don't know, man. I don't... Snoop Dogg's not as cool as Morgan Freeman, that's for sure. Snoop Dogg's a pretend gangster. Morgan Freeman, real gangster. Get Christopher Judge to play the female ogre. I don't know the name. Snoop Dogg was the dungeon master in that AI thing they had last year. Was that the one where like Joe Rogan and Donald Trump and everybody were playing D&D? Samuel Jackson is still not as good as Morgan Freeman. Working on Eminem funding today. I just bought some lottery tickets. Long shot, but if I hit, it'd be nice to start on cash flow. Nice. Jason Alexander is Dungeon Master. Definitely not. What about Michael Clark Duncan? Hmm. Beautiful voice. Still not Morgan Freeman. I don't know. I've just got a really special place in my heart for Morgan Freeman. Yeah, so that's, um, this is not financial advice, but I will say that if, uh, anytime you're like, hey, how can I help the project out? Um, I would say, again, not financial advice, go play the lottery. Just go play, buy some lottery tickets. Oh, I'm, I'm being killed. I'm being killed. I wasn't paying attention. I knew I heard an Ashira growl as well. Wasn't paying attention, I was reading chat. Was that financial advice? Of course it was not financial advice, I just said that. I've got video. So what you're saying is... See what happens when you don't give financial advice. Shit. Ah. Uh, and it's dark, and now I gotta run and find my corpse. Ah, oh, this game. Too difficult. No fun. Um, if you're if if you're out there, the person who mentioned that corpse runs are no fun, and we are just like the usual arguments. Um, who I responded to on YouTube earlier. You see, it wasn't that bad. Remortgage the house and put it all on red. Got it. Hey, you know what? I can't advise that you do that. But if you do that and you win, you know where to find us. Mega Millions is 977 million. Powerball is 875 million right now in the States. Well, again, I'm not recommending that you have at it, but. You never know what happens. You, too, could be a silent partner. In a game that is going to appeal to many, many dozens of people who don't mind corpse runs. That Ashira was a collector, should have thought about others before giving non giving out free non-financial advice. Mm. 
I'm curious if you charge. Oh, no, because you probably need some sort of accreditation. The owner of uh, Xaviant, am I pronouncing it correctly? Was a lottery winner. I mean, that's the way to do it. If you're going to start a video game company, I think winning the lottery first or maybe doing really well at multi-level marketing, those are two different options that I would recommend. Don't recommend spending a long, long time in the industry. I would say focus more on one of those two other things. Or be Chris Roberts. Yeah, I I guess be really convincing. I didn't think corpse runs was a problem till I died in Greater Fade Arc last night. Zenfar, did you find your corpse again or no? Is it gone forever? Will there be a Night Harbor Lottery? There might be. What's going on, Brown Butcher? How you doing? What's up, Brown Butcher? How you doing, sweetie? Is it mechanically possible for a boss lich to raise a player's corpse to fight his companions? That would really make the run back interesting. Um, I don't know if we've got an ability in this game yet. Hanging in there, been a minute? It has been. Hopefully you're good. Hopefully life is treating you right. Every day is a gift. It's true. You, you and the lady butcher. She's, she is on my, she is on my nice list. We only spoke that once, but she seems like a wonderful person. I suppose now, anytime you don't want to commit to a promise about the game, you just pinky promises. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said something about pinky promises the other day, and I thought it was brilliant. I <laughs> pinky promise. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh, the professionalism. One of these days, people are going to go, you know what I like most about that, that company that made that game with the corpse rums? Their fucking professionalism. <laughs> they were professionals the whole time. Oh, John said I did when you said you'd stream next week. <laughs> oh man, you know one of the main reasons why I've refrained from being too cursy on streams and in Discord, but we kind of lighten up and we curse a little bit more. I mean, we're grown-ups. Everybody like if we look at our if we look at our YouTube demographics um mailing list demographics, we got a couple of vectors where we can get demos. Um website they all kind of try to tell us who you are and uh for the most part it's a bunch of old parts that are out there so but we know it's not polite for everyone to curse and we know some of you got youngins that are watching every once in a while and stuff so you know we try to keep it my only my only reservation on cursing was i didn't want you guys to start getting a little too fresh and like discord and stuff getting too salty lich Making people think that we're not the friendliest, friendliest little community on earth. Man, something's up with the server today. Why is it always you? Because I like to pick on you.
I think you like it too. So, it's okay if we do it in here, but be nice to new people. The game will grow over time if we're lucky. Community will grow. People will come in, they'll ask silly questions. And we gotta be nice to them. And if you can promise, I will. I will. We're keeping it we're keeping it PG thirteen. Don't get excessive with the F word. Oh my gosh, just it's just crazy tonight with the lag. Wonder what's up. Let me see if there's any questions about it in in uh Slack. Excuse me, that was gross. Oh, Nick. I just saw your response. It's, let's see. Oh, no, I thought you used a different term that I was like, oh, I thought it was a different term. I was like, you use that term too. Okay. All right. All right. I'll, I'll be following up on that tomorrow. Not tonight, but a subtle list. That's cool. <laughs> um, How can we not be the friendliest? I mean, we're pretty friendly. I swear I have a shirt that's almost exactly like your flannel. My flannel comes from a cool German company, but uh, oh yeah, Columbia. I'm sure they. I'm sure there's probably some other ones exactly like this out there. My flannel is so nerdy. You don't even know. It even has it's got like secret compartments. I can see some EQ veteran elder millennial dad lining up his identical toddler triplets in their little chairs to watch the daily m m stream. No blues clues or door to explore today you learn about the merits of corpse runs and how they build character. That's right. And if you little shits are out there watching right now. This downtime's nothing compared to how bad it used to be. We used to have to sit in the snow staring at a book uphill both ways. So no matter what we do to you in this game, it's still not as bad as it could have been. Just know that now. Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Um... I hate sitting up hills. It's tough on the bum. You guys are really living the dream, doing something creative with other like-minded folks. This will be such a fun time to look back on in your life. For sure. That is, that is, I, I hope that's the case. I hope no matter what happens by the end of this process, the team can look back and really appreciate uh, this one. Um, you know, and if folks wind up moving on to other teams and working on other projects over time, I think it'll be good for them to kind of see that I wasn't making stuff up when I, when I talk about kind of the vibe on this team versus other teams that I've been on. Belfaster, that's, it's not doom. It's a good thing. Downtime was 24 hours long both days. Oh man. Um, Simon, are you still out there? People have been complaining about the nighttime in Pantheon. I'm like, they haven't seen anything. Um, I noticed, I noticed, or I was uh, pointed to some different threads. 
I did notice that there are there are some conversations out there in the wild about people are like, oh, you know, this is tough in Pantheon or whatever, and then other people are like, yeah, well then you're really not gonna like Eminem. It's like, yeah, it happens. Um, Simon is glass flats still checked out. Man, it's funny, like, how twitchy stuff is at the moment. Ollie's made some... I think it's... Is it based on the navigation changes? There have been some changes and some things have clearly broken. If you're... Hey, Simon, if you're working on it, you don't have to check it in. Um, if it's checked in tomorrow then I'd like to do some work in it, but uh, you don't have to check it in in the meantime. <laughs> yeah, Corbett, I mean, I don't see it as it's slowing down progress. We have light sources in the game. Um, we have, over time, you'll see probably some mudflation that leads to greater av availability of different light sources. We have the ability for you to make light sources already in. I mean, I could be making them with my little survival kit, right? Like if that's what bothers me so much about the game is not having light. I start with a candle. Um, you know, there'll be spells. There'll be people that'll probably run by and buff you with a light source spell, right? So everything that everything that people are like, oh shit, this is uh, uh, corpse run. Oh, it's dark or whatever. There's plenty of there's plenty of opportunities for you to mitigate anything that we put in. The the only reason why we leave stuff like that in or put stuff like that in is so that it can be mitigated and we give a shitload of different avenues of miti you know to mitigate these things that we put in. Um and the reason for that is it either gives you a personal goal, right? Like, "Oh, I want to be I want to get a better light source. I want to get to the point where I can make certain light sources, um, you know, like I, I want to personally get the thing that will mitigate whatever problem bothers me. Or you interact with the community. You interact with the community and we see this shit all the time. So, and it's been nice watching people in OOC during the play tests ask like, I can't find this thing. Uh, or, you know, where'd I go to do X? Or can you help me? Blah, blah, blah. And even in the playtest, we've already seen people, hey, meet me here, and we'll go figure that shit out for you, right? So it's like, some people get a little bit cranky about it, Liz. Some people get pretty frustrated in OOC, even though they're regulars here in the channel, and I, you know, you would expect that they know that this is about to happen to them, Liz. But... Um, do you think a group would be able to or need a single... Um, party member to be the light guy. Uh, you can when you're moving and stuff, but then you can also build a campfire and put it down, or you can just, in a number of areas, if you're in a dungeon, you can position yourself near some torches. Um, so you could either make a campfire. We may have the ability for you to put torches down as well, where there's no campfire benefit, but maybe there's the light. Like, there's things that we'll be able to do. Um, somebody may be wearing a lantern on their belt, um, you know, so there's all sorts of stuff, right? Like, <clears throat> Liz said, yeah, I did get mad, but I, I got better and started helping others. <laughs> you were so cranky. I was like, <laughs> I, was, I was like, you, Liz, of all people, you should have known this was ha going to happen. Flaming weapons later on. Exactly. I remember during the play test, I had a really bright light in that dungeon. Everyone was huddled around them. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I've seen that behavior and it's been pretty cool to watch. Yeah, so when everybody's like, hey, why don't you have another play test? Um, so things that we really want to get done before we have another play test, we've got a lot of things where we've gone back, gone back and like refactored. Um, some things which has led to some 
some some twerkiness and so you're seeing all sorts of stuff that really need to be polished back out and made to be better um, before we have another play test we want to get all the textures in the night harbor i'd really like to have that happen but like this hitching the the random twerkiness when mobs are in front of us now um there's some player controller and animation stuff that's going on uh probably a few optimizations that we can hit so uh, Fire Elemental was giving off light, correct? And at some point before we go live, we'll be doing some rebalance passes on um, things like light source availability and other other stuff like that to sort of make sure that there is a progression, there's a feel like stuff, you know, valued. Sandai Sandayu Yagi said hey folks first time managing catch stream live usually watch vods on youtube well thank you very much for watching good that you're here and thanks everybody that subscribed on youtube we just heard uh 3800 people on youtube subscribers so uh, and i think the bonds are typically watched by like 70 percent subscribers or something 60 70 percent subscribers it's a decent rate um, but that could also just mean that we're not reaching new people fast enough, but whatever. Um, Corbett said, uh, oh, sorry, Simon said, got a meeting in 15 minutes, no worries, right on. So, I don't, hmm, I don't know if I'll actually get into it tonight, but I'll, I'll, I will definitely use the checkout check-in notification if I do, Simon. Um, though he probably said that 15 minutes ago and now he's in a meeting with him and him. Oh wait, did I just out Simon? Enduro said, I've only just dipped my toe into classic style MMOs, but having a reason to use the torch is really cool to me. I'm glad you like it. Um, if you haven't checked out Embers Adrift, definitely check that one out as well. I just have, I haven't had any time on my hands. <laughs> hey. Um, so I haven't been able to get back in lately, but I would like to. I've enjoyed playing it. Um, and Evercraft Online, when they're running playtests, would be another one for you to check out. Um. Embers is how you stumbled into us. All oh, right, on cool. Yeah, they're they're super nice folks. Um, I want to get. I want to uh, see if we can get them in for play test sometime soon. We'll sneak them in. Sorry, guys. Secret, secret, sneak them in. Because they've been uh, they've been real cool about talking to us about how their how their game's been we had them on for that stream where we were talking about like some of the challenges and all that stuff if you haven't watched that it's a good one so I'd be curious to because we've watched we've watched a couple I think Aloha was um, playing during one of the play tests and she was on somebody's stream I don't know did she stream it herself Try to remember um, some things like that. So it's cool to it's cool to kind of get their feedback. It'd be nice to get them in. How is the Evercraft stuff coming? Um, she streamed herself. Okay. Because um, for some reason I thought she was in a group with somebody else that I usually watch, but maybe I was just watching hers. Um, how is the Evercraft stuff coming along for those guys? Your gameplay stream with them was one of the last ones I was able to check out. Just the little bits I see. Nick's really much better about staying up on stuff like that. Um, but whenever we see something from them, it's... I mean, they're, it feels like they're always just making steady progress. Their art style works so well for making content. Yeah. 
any chance that having a light source will affect the behavior of some mobs? Maybe debuff a light sensitive creature um, if the source is strong enough. You know, with with our wacky people in tech, um, there's no telling what we may wind up doing with stuff like that. We'll see. It's funny, the more the more we look at, as much as I've liked... Hmm, I'm not even going to say it on stream. I'll have to... Hmm, yeah. Somebody made a good point about the moons the other day. And now that we've got the moon cycles in... Oh, that one's going to bug me. I'll have to talk about it. Will mobs ever have different resistances to different melee weapon types? Uh, when that's come up in the past, I'm fairly certain that the general consensus has been that it winds up not feeling not feeling great. But I can't remember I can't remember the specifics of where we landed. I mean, I tend to be bad on that type of stuff because I'm like, yeah, go for it. Um, not thinking about like some of the, some of the complaints that'll, that'll form, um, like, oh, now I've got to carry too many weapons or blah, blah, blah. Um, I tend to be anything that's kind of kooky like that. I, I'm like, cool, do it. Uh, so it's good that we've got other people on the team that are thinking about that more deeply. The more fleshed out basic level stealth mechanics involving light might be cool, but I can see that being a chore. Um, I think it's partially... Uh, one, of, one of the problems I, I, I think we also have with it is just... Um, given how dynamic the environments are, um, you know, dynamic lighting, day-night cycle, all of that stuff, um, I think there's probably a bit of a some calculation overhead that also makes it kind of not worth worth it for us but i might be wrong on that <laughs> go to bonus route instead of a resistance route Then the, I'm curious, then the other thing that happens is a bit of, do you feel obligated to have, always have like a certain diversity of mob types in an environment, which then makes everything feel kind of homogenous? Mm, oh, actually, I think fire beetles are weaker. Oh my gosh. Maybe we should just restart the server and see if that fixes it. Brown Butcher, getting in and playing eco, it just, it feels really decent. So the fact that it looks like, you know, it's got the, the voxel aesthetic. You don't really feel it while you're in there. At least I didn't feel it while I was in. I'm fairly open-minded. All right, I'm getting my ass handed to me. I watch a few minutes of this, hear the crickets and music, and I'm like, okay, you got me. When's the next EQ progression server starting up? I guess I can do another sub 150 run. Um, May, right? I think that's it, May. 
Didn't they didn't they announce some stuff? Because my my birthday's well, my birthday was yesterday. Um so I I always remember EQ came out in March, but I forget when in March. Didn't it come out in March? Thank you, Olgo. So it is May. 25th anniversary TLP. Cool. March 16th, 1999. Right on. Sanguine, thank you very much. I made it. Do you guys have an idea of what the final UI will roughly look like? Um, we're playing we're playing with stuff right now, and we're doing UI work now. But there'll definitely be there'll be a number of iterations to get a final final look. Uh, we're looking we're looking to do something that really is invocative of like old old CRPGs, old MMO look. Um, but we also, uh, and we, uh, it's possible we have more than one that you can select from. There, I said it. Um, so it's possible that we, we have more than one. And the, uh, and then one of the options may just be super clean. UI skins confirmed. You can confirm whatever you want on my streams. I will promise you the world. And then later, if I was wrong, you can just blame me. You'd be like, Sean lied to us. And the team will be like, yep. Did he pinky promise? Yeah, that's how he gets you. Are you a book audiobook person? I'm a big book audiobook person. I'm almost I've almost always got an audiobook running. When I'm doing the chores, walking the dog, grocery shopping, I'll typically have an audiobook or a podcast going. So you said I really enjoyed uh Dungeon Crawler Carl. Uh so the RPG, a uh, good sci-fi that's releasing on Netflix is Three Body Problem. Definitely out there, but super interesting. Yeah, I've been really curious about whether or not I want to read the books. I've watched a number of YouTube videos on it now. Um, I think we'll probably watch the series. Um, yeah, my concern with the book is it's going to be a bit out there and a lot of people that are like into the book, no offense if this is you. Uh, but a lot of people that are into the book, it's like, yeah, man, I'm really into it. And it's like, yeah, but would I be into it? Like, am I actually going to enjoy reading it? Because um, I got a lot of other shit that I want to read. So I think I may just watch the series and see how that goes. Um, I like watching the videos about Three Body Problem. There's definitely some... There are definitely some cool videos on it, so I, I'm I, like I've had some spoilers. Uh, do you have any favorites you've listened to read? So I tend to do nonfiction, um, though some of it may be historical fiction, kind of like uh, oh man, I'm I'm spacing on his name at the moment. Let me. Uh, here, let me. I, I and I, I, I definitely have a number of favorite books that I've listened to, read, but I tend not to mention them because I, I read a lot of like social and political stuff as well, and I don't necessarily. We don't hit those topics here, so I avoid. Um, 
I'm currently I'm currently listening to Whitney Webb's One Nation Under Blackmail. If that helps you kind of get a, a sense of what I'm into. Um, I wanted to listen to Crystal Shard because it's been so long since I've read it. It, it was one of my favorite books growing up. Um, but the voice acting is... Oh, man. It's just... They, they're actually voice acting the various characters with different voices, and I'm just not feeling it. Um, nope, 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 nope. Okay, so here's one that's uh, I could actually mention. So many of these, I'm like, I might mention these, these books in like a DM, but I'm not going to talk about them on stream. I don't want anybody getting their ass in a twist about my interests. Um, Uh, the Jeff Shara books, if you're into like history, that's pretty good. Um, so like, uh, Rise to Rebellion, um, The Glorious Cause. So like Civil War and, well, I actually recommend the Revolutionary War books that he's, uh, that he's done really, really good. Um, dude, I can't mention any of this stuff. Stuff like Ray Dalio's principles uh, for dealing with the changing world order. Um, uh, the Great Depression was uh, by James Ledbetter was a really interesting read. Um, no, no, no. Uh, Lords of Easy Money was interesting. No. Jeez. Uh, this one's a ways back. If you haven't read Empire of Imagination by Michael Whitwer um, about the origins of D&D, &D, that was really good. Man, I sure... Yeah, so actually, I can't really mention any of the books that I listen to. Uh, probably the safest one is Neil Howell's recent The Fourth Turning is Here. That was good. I, I think that's middle of the road enough that no one could complain. Been listening to Michael Crichton this week. Uh, Congo and Eaters of the Dead. Oh man, classics. Whitney Webb is the goat. She is big brained. Um, anyone ever read uh, Haruki Murakami, um, one book a long time ago during the EQ days. I'm trying to remember which one it was. And I don't even know if I read the whole thing. And it's not because I didn't like it. I just think I got distracted by something. No, you can mention whatever you want. I, uh, I tend to, I tend to, well, not tend to. The pre preference on this channel is that we stay away from politics religion any of the things where people will start to you know stop being adults about shit um and we just keep it we we stay in fantasy land here um and so the reason why i'm not mentioning um any of the the books i read is because almost all of them are on those topics so I'm just, I'm just very in interested in the actual world when I'm not working on the virtual world. In-game religion is okay. In-game politics, in-game uh, religion. Gnomes are okay to discuss, um, since you guys seem to have a gnome fetish. Uh, let's see. Hey, be more gaming. The Good Guys by Eric Uglin. What's that about? The Good Guys, Eric Uglin. Now take a look. Uh, you did not see that snake kick even once because I killed him too fast. I'm just too powerful. Hey, Justin Beer, what's going on, buddy? 
What's with those Inuit followers? Am I right? I hate them. Having a good day with your caregiver? Oh, right on, man. That's good to hear. Senor Angus apparently has a bone to pick with necromancers. Went to McDonald's for, I think, the 230th time. Hey, man, if it works. Hello, little man. I'm a pelt for 13 copper. He has a bone to pick with Necro. <laughs> yes. Robert Helsinki. We need to do the thing again sometime soon. You know what I mean? Wink, wink. Not kidding. I checked it out on Google. Google let you know you've been there 230 times. Nice. Uh, Belfaster says, literally the only time I read a book start to finish was when I got a week of SDC in junior high. Um, in school detention or whatever people call it, read Dean Kuhn's Hadaway. I'm late to the audiobook party, but I've enjoyed it so far. Yeah, audiobooks have proven to be really good. Um, you guys got to read books in, in school detention? I got sent to divert, like the, not diversion center, but I got sent to the, uh, because like diversion center was like kids lock up, but I got sent to whatever they called the school where they send you where you're no longer in school. So you're at the other school. They send you to like to just like the misfit school for a week and they wouldn't let you do anything except have like normal school book open. Roberts. Um, uh, keep an eye out. I'll check in with you in the morning. Um, we'll see. I've got some, I've got a few things going on tomorrow, but if it's, if it's earlier in the day, then we may be able to do it. You know what I mean? Wink, wink. I have to check out your toy. Um... I'm reading chat and like just pushing the run key. I'm totally not going anywhere. Uh, I need to sell some stuff. Uh, actually, I don't need to sell that bad, do I? I did sing in a band in high school. Um... I bet the thing they is they join a Zoom call together and play the entirety of Rush's 21 to 12 front to back. That actually sounds pretty cool. We may have to do that. Uh, let's see. How bad of a kid was I? <laughs> oh my God. I'm so glad there was no social media when I was growing up. There's no record of this shit. I was, um, I was a bored kid. I got bored really easily. High school in Dothan, Alabama was not uh, what I would call the most challenging. Um, and uh, I was fighting the power at a young age. And once I realized that if I was just a complete maniac, um, they'd stop picking on me for being a nerd. Uh, I just went... I just went all out. I don't remember why I got sent there. I got detentions and stuff. I, I think I honestly, I think I only got sent to that school once. What was that for? Oh, I think that's when I just left school one day. I was sitting, like, it really drove me crazy to have to sit there. 
And some days, I'm, I'm like, I'm looking outside. I feel like, I felt like I wasn't learning anything. You know, they're like, hey, you need to read the following chapters. I'm like, all right, cool, done. That's it. And so I read a lot. You know, they would let me read after, after you're done doing your work or whatever. You can read. And so I'm sitting there and it was just, the weather was really good. And I remember looking out, out the window and, um, and thinking, man, the weather's like super nice. I'm really bored today. I'm just kind of over it. And, uh, and so I looked at the, there was a girl sitting next to me that I thought was cute or whatever. I looked at her and I was like, Hey, do you want to go for a walk? And she was like, well, what do you mean? I was like, I think I'm going to leave. I'm going to go for a walk. Do you want to come? And she's like, no, we've got class. And I was like, all right, well, I'll see you later. And I just got up and left. And for dramatic effect, because I was like, I didn't have my book bag or anything with me. And I just had that one book and I didn't want to go by my locker and I didn't want to carry it. So for dramatic effect, I just dropped my book in the trash can on the way out. And I left. <laughs> and so that was, I was just gone for the rest of the day. So naturally they called my parents and I was like, I'm probably going to get yelled at. So got home around dinner time. They're like, what are you doing? I was like, I just couldn't sit there anymore. I just, I was just done. <laughs> and that was like, of all the shit that I did, that was probably one of the more, more tame kind of things. And, uh, and I got, I think I got in the most trouble for that. <laughs> it was just, it was the weirdest thing to get in so much trouble for. But I think maybe it was because they had started adding up. Like I just had more and more stuff. <laughs> They're like, why did you do this? I don't know. I don't know. It happened. Said to himself, I could read this book or I could be out there starting a cult. <laughs> I think I... <laughs> I, I think I used to say dumb shit like that when I was a kid. They're like, what do you want to be when you grow up, cult leader? <laughs> well, hey. Oh. You gotta have goals, kid. I feel like uh, other kids saw you do that and were like, wait, we can do that. Um, there were, there were on occasion some conversations like that with my fellow, my, my, my fellow kids. I ran for, so I ran for senior class president. So don't get me wrong. I, I, my first year in high school in Alabama. I moved to Alabama in the eighth grade. So I got to middle school and was just, you know, I mean, my glasses are not the thinnest. Uh, I eventually got contacts so I could be a little bit cooler, but thick glasses, Iron Maiden, three quarter sleeve t-shirt, ripped up jeans. I arrived in Alabama middle school and they were just like, what is wrong with this kid? Even the skateboarders were like, Oh my God, heavy metal nerd. Cause they were all punk rock. So they, they just thought I was a nerd. And so I did not fit in. So I just read a lot. I read a lot. Um, and you know, played D and D with the couple of other nerds that I've met in my neighborhood. And like I lucked out and they happened to exist. And, um, dude, it, I, I went my first day in high school. So eighth grade, summer vacation was dope. We just, you know, skateboarded and like, you know, the skateboarder with the non-cool skateboarders and read a lot and all this stuff. And cool. Had still, I was still playing uh, CRPGs and all that shit, Ultimas and stuff. Um, my first day of high school, I was like, oh, this is the worst thing ever. I just, I went home, I was crying. I was like, oh my God, everybody hates me. <laughs> you know, it's just the usual shit. And so my first, my first year in high school was horrific. Like I read, finished my work, read my book, 
red in the stairwell during lunch, uh, you know, red during breaks. Uh, I don't even think my friends from the neighborhood, I think they were a year behind me, so I was like the only, only person I hung out with, right? Sophomore year, not much better, but it got so bad that I was like, all right, I give up. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna like, next year at school, I'm gonna do whatever I want. You know, somebody picks on me, I'm gonna pick back. Like, I just basically said, fuck it. Um, it can't get any worse. And just decided I was just gonna be like, uh, it was, you know, I watched a ton of those 80, 80s movies where the nerd becomes the cool guy or whatever. I was like, why don't I just try to do that in real life? It's Alabama. You know, I was like, these, what do they know about cool? So I just, anybody that said, like, was picking on me, I would just, I would destroy them. I would just talk so much shit. And I just got so good at talking shit. And I met a couple of skateboard kids that were a bit cooler. One of the, one of the guys, if you know skateboarding, one of the guys um, from the other school that I wound up meeting in electronics class because we, we had like a, uh, what do they call it? Um, uh, what do you... What do you call it when you're learning like trade skills and stuff? Anyways, we had like a trade school that we could pick one class from and we both picked electronics. Um, vocation. Yeah, like a vocation uh, school. And the 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 kid was a dude named Jamie Thomas. Um, and so we met in electronics class and started talking. And, uh, and it was funny because Jamie was just like, all your gear... It's like, your, your clothes are so lame or whatever. Now, keep in mind, Jamie is making fun of my Iron Maiden t-shirts and shit. And then later on, when he's, like, making skateboard videos, he's listening to Iron Maiden. So, whatever. Um, but, he, you know, I'd go over to his house and he's like, here's all this gear that you can wear that's better. Right? Like, and so I got all these new clothes from him and stuff and learned how to dress a little bit better. And just, I started shaving my head all the time and bleaching my hair, like, white and just, or dyeing it different colors and shit. Um, you know got my nose pierced when the only place you could do it was I had to go to this like complete straight out of a movie barbershop in the hood. Um, and they were like, ah, you know, did it with the piercing gun. Like it was the mall or something. So basically just said, fuck it. I'm just gonna, I'm going to switch up my persona and, uh, see what happens. And dude, it was so night and day difference. Like, you know, I just, People are like, oh man, you're so crazy, blah, 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 right? And it just, my life was instantly better. I was like, why didn't I do this earlier? And um, I was friends with everybody. So I ran for senior class president. And when I ran for senior class president, um, at this point, the school hated me. <laughs> like, they just, I was such a pain in the ass. And, um, and so many people like, so many of the kids enjoyed it because I was such a pain in the ass. Um, and so I ran for senior class president and I remember you're allowed to put up posters, but they didn't tell you how, like they didn't give you any rules that you're on like posters because nobody had like exploited the system. So I, um, I discovered that you could get as long a roll of paper as you want if you go to the newspaper. They have like cast off rolls that are like this thick. So you can get just 100 meters of paper. And, uh, and so what I did was I went there and got new, like this newsprint paper. We rolled it out in my yard and we spray painted my senior class president signs. And so everybody else had their like their little sign that they put up and all of my like smaller signs had like 90s hip hop themes. Like, I don't know if you remember, there's a, the group called the, um, uh, I think it was, yeah, the black sheep. Right. Um, and they had this song you can get with this or you can get with that. And, uh, so that was my, um, that was because kids actually knew the song at the time that was like my theme for my campaign and uh you can get with this or you can get with that that song it was it was on mtv a lot um but i think you'll get with this because this is where it's at right and so yeah that was that was 
And so we had these big ass spray painted things. So we put them up in the hallways and stuff and just covered lockers and shit. Um, we had like three of these big ass signs and that wound up being against the rules apparently. So that was, I got in trouble that day for that. We were handing out candy to everybody, which you, I guess they later said, you're not supposed to bribe people for votes. I was like, apparently you don't know how this shit works. Um, and yeah, so that's what I did. Um, and then when we had to go up and give the campaign, like you go up and say your name in the auditorium. When I went to, uh, when I went to say my name, like when I went up there, they literally, no bullshit, they took me aside and they said, listen, if you say anything other than your name and what office you're running for, we're going to cut the mic and we will expel you. <laughs> uh, they were so pissed. Hey, Ali. So... Yeah, I went up there and I forget exactly what I said. I, I, I think I said something like, you know me, I'm running for senior class president. Peace. I was, I was so, I was such a little hood kid. Baggy ass pants. Um, I did not get expelled, but, but, um, I did not get senior class president. Everybody, the entire auditorium, like, because I went up there and I just stood in front of the mic for a minute. Everybody's yelling and, because they knew I was going to do something dumb. And, uh, oops, I shouldn't have done that. And, yeah, so, <laughs> so I did not win. I did not win. And I talked to my guidance counselor, who is kind of, she was on my, I was, she was on my side. She, and she, she told me like when I talked to her, cause I was bummed about it. I was like, I don't know anybody that voted for that dude. And, uh, she was like, it's okay, baby. You were never going to win. <laughs> they weren't going to let you win. She said that. I was like, oh, that's cool. This is the memories part of monsters and memories, by the way. Uh, yeah. Just me telling old ass stories. But there are some good life lessons. It was definitely rigged. It was definitely rigged. I learned early on. John said, random memory trigger in high school. I went to a movie with a girlfriend. A tall guy sits in front of her. She says, never fails. I said, I got this. I started to lean forward. She said, no, you don't. I hit the guy on the shoulder. Said, hey, move the fuck out the way. He looks back. She's dying inside. Says, okay. You knew him. <laughs> Oh man, that's the setup. That's the setup. We are preparing you for a future of real politics where people are absolutely not influenced by outside sources, even in their decision making. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the sandstorm is cool. Everyone needs a good punk rock Sean arc in their backstory. I had I I had some good years. How's the gameplay? We got a lot of things to hit on, Ollie. Um the server's been really wonky today. Um forgive me, I'm I am playing in the editor, so the frame rate's naturally low and stuff, but had a lot of rubber banding issues, Ollie. Um, let's see if it happens. I swear it happened though. Uh, Zukin and John can attest. They saw it earlier. Excuse me. I'm trying to remember if I've seen it in the last little bit. You don't believe me. My favorite story is still Sean jet skis. Oh my gosh. That story. What's up, not how you been And a lot of like hitching like this, Ollie. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, somebody was actually saying, Soulfire, yep. Engine, engine number nine on the New York transit line. If your train falls off the track, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Back on the scene. Yeah, that song was so good. I'm gonna have to listen to that again.
Oh, that thing's whipping my ass. I switched jobs a while back, almost done with probation. Nice, dude. Yeah, I'll tell the jet ski story sometime soon. That was a fun one. Ollie loves that story. Because it involves shirtless guys trying to beat me up. Can use the sandstorm effect, change the color to yellow, use it in a forest as pollen storm like we have in the south. <laughs> Dude, we should totally do that as part of our different seasonal changes. In the spring, there should just be like a month where pollen just in everybody's debuffed. Oh my god, that would be so good. Nicodemus, do not forget that idea. Do not forget that idea. I had cedar. Pine trees in the south, but cedar in uh, Texas. Cedar would just tear me up. Belfaster says, What made you pick that song for your campaign over Color Me Bad, hit single, I Want to Sex You Up that same year? <laughs> Unironically, there are actually quite a few bangers in 91. So that would have made a good campaign. Yeah, I don't... Uh, hmm, maybe it... I wouldn't be shocked if we contemplated it. Dude, I, I swear, I think I just watched way too many 80s movies. I grew up on movies. My parents left me alone a lot. And so it was like the VHS, you know, our VCR and movies was what raised me. So I think that's probably what did it. Did you see that hitching, Ollie? It hitched just then. Cleric will need a Claritin spell. That would be so good. Misread that as weak hand at a glance. Hmm. Oh my god. Interru sneezing? Interrupting? We need a sneeze animation. We need a sneeze animation. Not said the game's just looking better and better. Dude, we've got so much going on lately. I'd love to uh, have to have to show you everything that's been been added and stuff. I am not Twitch, one of the OGs on the stream. Man, that, that 90s hip-hop and R&B era was something special. See you, Quixana. Good finger is healing well. Hope the shoulder goes well. Happy birthday. Thank you for all of that. I might see you again within the next two weeks. I had to sing It Takes Two, my senior year, year government class. There's film somewhere. Oh, that would be so good. Yeah, man. Interesting. I did not zone. I zoned to character select. Oh wow. I haven't had that happen in a while. Thanks, Ollie. And Stonalistic. Oh, uh, QuickSign said meant to ask, are you still going uh, are we still doing the trade skill stream Friday? Oh shit. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I forgot about it. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. But I did forget about it. Let's do trade skill brainstorm and we'll we'll talk about all sorts of wacky trade skills and stuff. I'll be able to type for that. Nice. Good call, Quixana. Trade skill BS, that means brainstorm Friday. Bam. 
Have a fun shower, Ollie. Swedish metal had some important albums in the 90s. Listen to Jester Ray album by Inflames. Dude, I did I was not aware of uh Swedish metal in the 90s. I was I was very into skate punk. Uh Metallica and shit. Uh a lot of like random alternative stuff, you know, that was very much the cure era for me. Um in the Smiths and random punk and just a shitload of hip hop. I mean, being a skateboarder in the South, you just, you got the full range of music. Echo and the Bunny Man, for sure. It's like, depending on what crowd of kids I was hanging out with that day or that evening, if I was hanging out with um, Angelica and all those kids, kind of the, the artsy kids, then we'd be over at her house drinking wine, listening to all sorts of random, gothy, alternative stuff. If I was hanging out with the rich girls, it'd usually just be alternative. Um, hanging out with my skateboard friends, it would be uh, a lot of like a lot of a lot of just random punk at the of the time like a copy of a copy of a copy of a green day tape um tons of bad religion minor threat fugazi all that stuff yeah if i was hanging out with angelica or the girls it'd be pixies pavement for sure um bauhaus who i uh i saw bauhaus live at coachella um, Joy Division, um, some random techno or whatever, Rancid for sure, when hanging out with the skateboard kids, Rancid, no effects for sure, but for whatever reason, we refused to admit that they were called no effects, and we always just said they were called no fucks. Um, so Peter Murphy, when I saw him at uh, Coachella, um, did the thing where he was suspended upside down from the chain and they kind of just slowly rolled him out during um during uh bella lugosi and uh yeah i think you can find that you, you can actually find uh that concert um on youtube where he's doing that it was really cool because like uh i think it was like the reunion coachella uh so Bauhaus played, um, could have sworn it was like a weird re Joy Division re reunion as well, uh, Gang of Four, this had to have been 2003 or something, Tat? No, can't think of it. Still blows my mind how different the Cure's music sounds versus what you think they should sound like based on the visuals. Really? They've always, I guess because I've just always known them as them. Um, I'm going to GM myself so I can go see what, uh, what Harrison's been working on. GM on. And then, yeah, let's just run there. Um, I grow off so I don't get killed. Okay, I'm gonna mute you got me for a second so Jasmine can make noise. Troll models are not in yet, buddy. What is what does Tat sound like? I'll have to look him up. So I'm going to a festival here this year that's got a really fun lineup. 
Uh, reload. Best of all. But it won't be till the middle of the year. We haven't started on Trolls that I know of. So listen to this lineup. This lineup will be at the festival this year. Corn, Amon Amath, Heaven Shall Burn, Blind Guardian, Behemoth, Hate Breed, uh, Milan Kong, Spirit Box, Motion of um, White, Clutch, big fan of Clutch, Dragon Force will be fun. Uh, and then more and more, it just kind of gets into maybe you're into them, maybe maybe you've heard of them, whatever. But those headliner heavy source is wonderful. They're there for the kids. They usually play in the morning. They're a heavy metal dinosaur band. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm pretty excited about that. And it's going to be an interesting festival for us because that still falls within the one year no alcohol challenge window. So, it'll be fun going to a festival and not drinking. Robert will not be playing there. Even Collective Soul seems like way heavier music than The Cure, but they kind of look like middle-aged fans. Well, I mean, it's like bad religion, right? I never knew I needed to see a heavy metal dinosaur band. You, pfft, you do. They're really good. Peace, Sex, and Tea is one of their songs that might help you find them. Oh, look. This road looks all new. Yeah. Um, so Harrison's been in. Pattis has been in. He just got the new, basically re-imported the terrain so that we could do the texture blending and stuff on the road. It was, I think it was just sand before. Steve Finn said that looked like a banger of a lineup. Yeah, you can see it more if you look up Reload Festival Germany. Max Sabbath, the McDonald's Black Sabbath band. I love I love all those bands. It doesn't look like they spilled the tea entrance with the road. Nope. I'd love to see them on Mars. It'll be my first time seeing them live. I'm pretty excited. I doubt I'll have my mechanical finger by then if I'm if I'm even eligible for it. I I, I don't know that I'll have it so. Throwing up the horns will be a little weird. Maybe I'll just 3D print one like the emote. If you're in our Discord, you'll have seen the... Uh, you will have seen the... Missing finger... Robot finger emote that Goblin made. Hey Sparrow, what's going on? Man, it's getting dark. Peace, sex, and tea. Let me look that up real quick. Peace, sex, and... Tea. Oh, found it right away. Founded in 2003 by Tatiana Di, uh, Di Maria. I'm curious if she's into anything else. So there's a heavy metal dinosaur band. Does that mean there's a children's version of Guar? It's kind of like that. Um, they sing in German. I they like each country that they're in they've got uh 
they, they basically have dinosaurs that speak the appropriate language. You could just do finger guns the whole festival. True. I'm going to do... Oh, dude, I've got a lot of finger guns to do now. You're right. Um, I saw Guar in Washington, D.C. at the old original, original 930 Club, which is... It's a weird band to try to fit into the 930 Club. Um, and I was on crutches at the time. And so... I had to leave. I left my crutches at the back of the room and hobbled up, and I just held on to the wrestling ring that they had set up for dear life the whole time, and uh, and I couldn't let go. Like I just, if I got pulled into the pit or whatever, I'd be screwed because I only had one leg that was working. And um, dude, they fucked with me so much during that show because I just was there holding on to the wrestling ring and wouldn't let go. Um, the they kept spraying me um those of you that don't know guar you should google guar and and look it up um so just imagine a giant demon with like a uh, hydraulic pumps being fed from where they've got a whole walled off side they they walled off like a third of the club just for all of their pumps and stuff and so i've got a giant demon standing over me Hosing me down with a, with his demon penis. Um, the lady that's crawling around on stage, smashing fake, fake poop onto my head because I can't let go of the ring the whole show. I was so soaked in fake blood by the time I left. <clears throat> you saw them at Dragon Con once, them and Gonsang. Yeah, the Guar show live was the craziest thing. I got back to the barracks. And uh, I'd been wearing a white shirt as well. Got back to the barracks and the the sergeant working uh, the desk was just like, what is wrong with you? This passage is cool. Let me... So there's a new, there's a new route up here that we've got to populate that has gone in since some of the redesign has taken place in here. All right, so there's definitely some SD work. But they enjoyed that show more than you did, Sean. No, man. I think they're used to it. For me, it was a special moment. Like Steve Earle, the one who knows my music taste would think. And no one who knows my music taste would think of that. I don't know who that is. Oh. Got some holes. Looked away to read my main screen. My ears only caught demon penis, and somehow it checks out. Yeah. <clears throat> they should have given me a free T-shirt, like I survived this concert. <laughs> I mean, my shirt was transformed by the time I left. The um. Oh, and it's funny. We left the we left the nightclub. We left the night the nine thirty, and there was like some. Uh, sort of dance club, Washington DC, Gucci ass like dance club. Um, people were standing in line when we came out and everybody's like whipping their shirts around and stuff and there's fake blood going everywhere. And the uh, people waiting to get into the dance club were not thrilled. I'm trying to remember if anybody played with them. I don't think anybody played with them that night. This reminds me, Guar playing with that American author, that band American Authors, Best Day of My Life. Uh, do a good song, and they emulate murdering them while the happy song plays in the background. It's one of the funniest things I've seen. I love how the band appreciates the comedy genius of it. I don't know that I've seen it.
Uh, did this zone line get fixed? I think there may be one of these zone lines that's not super friendly. It's not family friendly. Or see if I crash again while... while uh... Belfaster asked earlier, are there any bands that people would be surprised to learn you're into? Any Taylor Swift or Kate Bush or Guilty Pleasures? used to have this attitude towards bands I didn't like and think that sucks. I've always been so into everything that I don't know. I mean, it I don't know. What 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 would you think would be like a band that I wouldn't be into? Oh, it's just putting me back here. Okay, I see what's going on. Um Oh, yeah, and it's telling me that zoning failed even. So let's try ABBA. No, love ABBA. Uh, zone. I listen to these days as I've gotten older. I listen to a lot more. Um, I listen to a lot more Guar. Enigma used to be the shit. I don't, I don't know what they're actually saying, but I know it's like. Like Dum Guar or whatever. What What is this? Do, do. Yeah, one of my friends had an Enigma um, CD, and we used to blast it all the time. That was that was the girly music, dog. Um, Bare naked ladies. Uh, that's probably something I would only hear in a bar. So I don't know that I dislike them, but it's not some. It's not something I would intentionally play. Do do do. Island Boys, uh, I just feel bad for them. I, I don't think I've ever heard an island. Are they, do they actually make music? Is that a real thing? I thought they were just like a meme. You gotta understand, I was, I was also such a dork that, um, and this is one of those few things I feel bad, I look back on, I feel bad. I, I would, I would, I would not do it again, I don't think. My dad really wanted me, like, so we were just going to work on an old car together and, like, fix it up. And so my dad found a guy on base. My dad was still in the Army at the time. Found a guy on base that had a uh, had a 65A Mustang. It was like, my dad really wanted to work on that car. And I was like, because I was skateboarding all the time. So I was like, oh, Mustang, that's, that's. I don't know, that's too jockey of a car or whatever. Which is stupid, I play football as well. But like, so I was like, I really want a Volkswagen Beetle. And he was so bummed, but he was like, all right. So we traded the must. We traded the Mustang for three Volkswagen Beetles. Um, and we basically just tore, one da tore them down and rebuilt with the best parts, one. And a buddy of mine from uh, that I knew that had done welding in vocation class or whatever, vocation school, um, shaved all the lights and all the door handles. So it was like perfectly smooth. We installed this weird ass uh, round Coke key under the mirror. So if you did that, like it would activate the button. You push the button in the mirror, the little rubbery part of the mirror. You push the button, it would open the doors. Or open the door. The other door I just had to open. Um, so, and then boop. is all shaved. Um, lowered. And we had like seats from uh, like that year's or some relatively new Toyota Tercel in it. So they sat really low. Um, took the back seat out and just built a giant speaker box. So giant amp to like whatever, 18 inch uh, Wolfers, just complete dork car. Um, and so I would listen to everything just cranked up to try to figure out like what had the coolest bass lines. But I listened to like a lot of 90s, like Miami style, just bass music. Uh, I don't know that the, the Chronic wasn't out yet, was it? If it was out yet, but for some reason I thought that was a little bit later. Speaker boxes in, in the 90s, 2000s, dude, it was re 
ridiculously loud. Like you would you would feel it in your lungs. And uh Zone Fallen Pass. And uh there is room to sit skateboards on top of the box. <laughs> oh man. Have you ever heard Rin from Wales, England? Kid doing some great stuff. I I learned of Rin from John. John NS in chat is how I learned of Rin. Yeah, he's good. Miami style. Am, am I gonna get I don't think it matters. We we don't monetize our stuff, so let me see. Miami baselines. Hit the baseline. What is this? <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna watch this after stream. Nas just, uh, Ren just did a Nas cover remake. Interesting. Definitely a talented kid. Oh no! It was funny. Oh man, I remember that era because everybody would always have that CD. They're like, the everybody had the the CD that you heard would, um, like, this will destroy. You got to watch out. This CD will destroy your speakers. We're like, what? I gotta have it. Hey, Bumanji. Just roll up to a stoplight with the windows down playing. What is it? I, I'm clicking these and I'm like, I gotta pause them really quick. Oh, I'll have to watch this afterwards as well. What in the world? So they would they would pull you over and give you um give you tickets and shit in Alabama for your your music being too loud. I don't think I'm supposed to, I am supposed to be up here. There's a bridge up here. Can you zone into Telekir from here? Nope, you cannot. Telekir is not super far away, but it's not connected to this zone. So they did, and if your window tent was too dark, officers would strip it off so they pull you. Over. Yeah, well, they would definitely ticket you until you had to have it uh, removed. We got pulled over so often. I always love the question because we'd get in trouble for skateboarding, even if we weren't skateboarding. Like we'd skateboard somewhere and someone called the cops on us and then we'd be leaving and uh and they'd go 
The, were you just pull us over and they'd be like, were, were you just skateboarding? And we also, we eventually, when I was a teenager, we had a curfew. So it was like a $500 fine if you were caught out. Oh no. Oh geez. If you're caught out after dark, or not after dark, after a certain time. I forget what it was, like 10 or 11. Excuse me. Um, and so you could get in trouble for curfew violation. I mean, it was, this was like, this was the early 90s and stuff was kind of out of control. So I, I guess I, uh, I get it. I don't think it's constitutional, but hey. Olson 105, thank you for the follow. Um, you know what? Let me cast something on myself really quick. Is this floor going to be solid? It is not solid. Bang. Okay. Uh, curfew was not by parents. It was by the, um, it was by the city. I don't think it was county. I think it was city. We had a lot of, you know, it was a, it was the, um, it was the early 90s, so we, we had a fair amount of, like, interesting gang and drug stuff going on. What is this, page on 1984? America's not landed free. I'm sure we said stupid shit like that, and it did not get a good response from the officers. I <clears throat> missed the days when we pimped out our rides, the ground effects, stereo systems, tricked out hydraulic. Oh, the simple life. All right, server's coming down in 30 seconds. I We were skating at a bank one night. It was just three of us this one time, and the police rolled up. And if if any of you are law enforcement officials out there, Realizes I'm repeating a story of me being a silly teenager. So take it in stride. Um, I cannot find a solid place to land before the server comes down. Oh, I'm not worried about legal ramifications of this. I don't want anybody to be insulted. So three cop cars roll up because we're at this bank I guess and we probably maybe triggered an alarm or something didn't mean to we were just skating there because it had good curbs and uh server coming down now see it telling me um see a bell faster um yeah and so it's like they wanted my friend's phone number to call. They're like, we're going to call your parents. I was like, hey, call my parents. You can call mine, but my friend doesn't have a, you know, they were like, what's his, you know, what's your number to my friend? He's like, I don't have a phone. And he really didn't have a phone. His parents rarely paid the bills. And so he didn't have a phone. Um, and so they were like, you know, don't tell me that. And, you know, like accuse him of lying. And again, this is what a, what a punk ass little kid I was. Um, he was like, he goes, you can take me by the house. I'll show you. I don't have a phone. And the cop says, listen, son, this ain't a taxi service. Uh, the only place we, the only place we're going to take you is jail. Or the, oh, what was it? The only, the only place we go is somewhere in jail. Diversion center or jail. That's what it was. Because diversion center was for kids. Only place we go is diversion center or jail. And I said, don't lie to him. I know you go by Krispy Kreme. And <laughs> the cop pushed me so hard into the, into the car. And I was just like, yes. Yes. I thought of that real time. Yes. I was so proud of myself. <laughs> 
<laughs> he really didn't have a phone though. They eventually just let us go. They were just fucking with us. I was such a rebel, man. I was such a little rebel. It was so funny. I'm not a rebel now though. I play by the book. <laughs> uh, he says as they live screen stream the game that they're <laughs> working on where they refuse to solicit funding because they don't want to listen to the man's opinions about what to do with the damn game. Corpse recovery. That is a horrible mechanic. Ain't nobody going to play that game. Well, screw you then. <laughs> we'll play by ourselves. <laughs> we don't care if you don't want to play our game. Oh, man. Uh, Drew ATX, what's going on? Uh, so, hello, all new viewer here. I've been watching a lot of the Vaz lately. Really enjoying the vibe. Right on. Thank you for that. Glad you are enjoying them. John, what are you typing? I see you typing in Slack. Am I, let me, let me see. Am I revealing anything weird on stream? I don't even watch one. Man, I've got such a slouch when I'm sitting here. Uh, oh, shit. Nothing important? Okay. Um, Ollie, what is going on? Were you the one that just dropped a server? Issues on the client. What is going on with the client? Tell us all about it, Ollie. Hopefully I don't blast everybody's ears in a second. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Need some background noise. Uh, okay, so... No, that was an update. It's stuttering every... X seconds and you get a big pause in a rubber van include uh, inconclusive on the profile i have i have to look further uh, ah okay this is my first live stream and let me tell you it covered some topics none of them game related i apologize um i'm not going to lie to you and say that a lot of my other streams are any better um I'm here to answer questions sometimes. Uh, a lot of bullshitting goes on in the streams. Uh, sometimes we talk about the game. Friday, we're gonna do a brainstorm. So we do brainstorms together. You can find them on YouTube. Excuse me. Um, it's it's 10.35 p.m. here. So a lot of times if you're watching the stream, I'm burping because dinner was a couple hours ago and then I drank a Red Bull. So we're gonna do a community brainstorm. And uh, and so we just, we will, we'll just like, we'll come up with a bunch of shit. We'll be copying, pasting it into a doc and then we'll keep it and we'll share the doc. If people want to see like past brainstorms, we do that. Hey, what's up, Landon? Uh, do we have a release gate, uh, release date for this game yet? Um, we're going to be releasing a lot of information about stuff like that. Um, the end of this month, we're working on it right now. Um, so we're going to give you some ideas of what we're thinking about how we're going to move forward. And then we'll see what your reaction is. And if your reaction's like, not good, <laughs> then I guess we'll deal with that. And if your reaction's like, no, oh, okay, then hell yeah, we're going to power ahead. Um, we're probably just going to power ahead either way. No offense. Um, Dura said this is great. Sandayu said, you've made me laugh a few times, won't lie. Some good background noise as I play some PZ. Right on. That is, that's what we're here for, to provide you with some background noise. Bad Religion said that when I saw him in DC. Said, we're just background noise for you to drink to. And I was like, oh. Sorry, you feel that way. 
Love you guys. Simon's got a new tower. Oh, that's what he's doing. I was like, how the hell do you get up here? I was trying to get up here the other day and I was like, I don't know. Did he think this through? Apparently he thought it through better than I thought he did. People are like, how many zones do you guys have? We don't have a ton of zones, but we have a lot in our zones, if that makes sense. Um, sue them. Who? Everybody. Um... Oh, if they don't like it. Olson105 says, long, uh, long time lurker, first time live stream, right on. Is this a side gig for you now or full time focus? Um, it is my only job, um, but I, I find a lot of other things going on during my day, but unlike uh, most of the rest of the team, I don't have another job at the moment. So, um, it definitely affords me a lot of time to do uh, different stuff during the day. So depending on the day, I may plop my ass in this chair about 8 or 9 a.m. Some days I'll just get in like if I've got stuff going on with Jasmine or if I got like errands to run or whatever. Um, then I might get in a bit later, but you know, it, it, it affords me some good opportunity to be here and work on different things. Um, is this the tower from the backpack event quest? It is. You guys ran through there. Uh, this zone's changed quite a bit since then. What? I've never been in here. I don't know that I want to show you guys. I might... I might not, uh... I might not show you guys this. I don't want to ruin it. And since uh, Simon doesn't stream, then you just won't see it. Yeah, how about that? I'm not going to show you. Just a peek. I'll fly around it. Hide the play screen. Talk about how cool everything you see is. That would be great. Darius said, hey Sean, please. Yes, please don't show. Please don't show. Please don't show. Yeah, more and more as we go, you guys are going to see less and less just because we're not going to have time to show you everything. And we'll be doing a lot more. Um, there's just going to be a lot of stuff happening that is just... And a lot of what we do is going to be in data that's on the server. And so it's just, you're not going to know that certain things are going to happen certain times and stuff. So, um, But he's been working on... New bigger mountains. We've got to work on some, get some more. All these place, not the sand, but like the placeholder rock textures and stuff. We'll have to work on. What in the world? Freaking dude. All right, I'm gonna stop looking around. I'm finding stuff that I, I haven't seen. Did we do anything with the biomes, or was that a test? It was. Uh, it was a test, but you may see them. <coughs> Sorry, didn't mute that time. You may see them in some places. Um, but you'll probably have questions on that front when we tell you our plans for going live. Uh, big zones, some vertical adventuring areas, good stuff. Yeah, I can't wait for us. We took fall damage out because uh, we were doing some controller work, I think. And um, the... It was just killing people all the time. And so the uh, fall damage is off at the moment, but it'd be nice to have it back on by the next play test. That way there's plenty of opportunity for you to fall and die. More opportunities for you to experience your favorite mechanic. Ooh. We will do our best to strategically think zones out. What's up, Adichie? 
What's my favorite type of biome? Bonus question. Bone and wings or boneless. Bone and wings is easy. Just bone and wings. Um, favorite type of biome. <laughs> I mean, not going to lie. Big fan of desert. I know you guys are probably tired of seeing deserts, but big fan of desert. Um, I like deserts well enough. Wait, 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 wait. Volume up. Can't decide between a desert or snow. Yeah, but oh man, snow is just so cold. I felt I felt so cold throughout Velius. Oh, interesting. Is it not doing box volume? I guess it's doing them, but since box volumes don't have. Um, Matrix Hunter said snow and desert. Uh huh. Um, Stone Six says reminds me of RPG Dark Sun. Love the desert. Um, Enduro can't decide. Lich says there's a time and place for bone in and boneless wings. Both are good. Yeah, but like a boneless wing, I, I'd rather just have like a, a tender. Or not a tender, but like a chicken strip. Like a little breast meat strip. Um, John says I like snow because it's underused in games in general. Fair enough. Megaton says, real talk, boneless wings are not wings. May not even be chicken. There are no rats around here, oddly. Um, Dune desert vibes. Oh yeah, the kids like Dune. Um, plains are really peaceful forests with giant green vegetation. That makes sense for, that makes sense for Goblin. Um, so is a boneless wing just a breast strip? Is that what it is? If that's what it is, then I guess boneless wings are good. Um, completely underwater zones, Corvid says. Boneless wings are for long drives only. I couldn't eat that kind of thing while on a drive. I think boneless boneless wings are for slamming a lot of them down really fast have caves so deep there's no air just airless caves biome well yeah it wasn't based on caves but there was was it the gray in Lucklin had no air which was kind of cool <laughs> methane gas zone I I I think my Red Bull's worn off enough that I'm not going to do any fart jokes. <laughs> uh, 
I mean, every once in a while, if we were running to Shreza Temple, we'd see some people in the gray, but not often. I don't think there was much of an incentive to be in the gray, was there? I assume they probably had some sort of camp. What's this guy? Spawn number 45. Who are you? What do you do? Oh, okay. Just for the relay. Oh, jeez. Thought the gray was a bard swarming zone. I could see that. Okay, we just sat in Fungus Grove every day. Pulling hordes and hordes and hordes, like pulling the whole zone in Fungus Grove. Excuse me. Place a little salt farmer camp. Is that what this is here? So I was starting to explore some of the stuff that you did, Simon. I don't know if you were listening and just then I was like, nope, I'm not going to show all this on stream. I will definitely just be exploring this off stream. How are the crystals turning out? Uh, we need to do something with the with the um, shader on them. I think needs to be fixed. I saw Monty in her earlier. If Monty is still around, then maybe it's a question for Monty. I'm not sure. Um, Simon, if you're still out there, what I may do is, um, I may move that camp. It's, it's, a. Uh, I appreciate, I appreciate you getting that in there. What I may do is move it to be a little bit more, maybe I'll move it kind of, I'll move it somewhere somewhere like this or just kind of somewhere off the road a little bit where it looks like they use the road cool But I'll definitely, I'm going to, I'll explore in here tomorrow a little bit. If the zone's available, I may uh, make some adjustments and then can do some population adjustments. What are these guys? Hey, Simon, were you the one that recommended the, the octopus documentary? We started that last night. Good recommendation, right up my alley. It's funny. It's funny that uh, that you that you're like you responded to the Whitney Webb book. Uh, yeah, that kind of stuff. Definitely, definitely thinking about that stuff while watching it. So, okay, everybody, it is <clears throat> ten fifty one. On Friday stream, we're gonna do a brainstorm session. Um, so if you want to throw out ideas and stuff, we're going to be talking about trade skills. Um, and when we do that, usually it just goes all over the place. It's not a super, super strict format or whatever. So 
um, but we'll have it. Um, if you check our playlist on YouTube, I think there's a brainstorm playlist. What time Friday? It'll be 8 p.m. my time. I believe with the with us not being daylight savings yet, I think we're off by an additional hour. So we'll have to look at the conversion. Um, basically, three out what whatever time it is now. Go backwards two hours and forty five minutes, um, or go backwards three hours. So, I, yeah, I think we're we're off by like an additional hour or something. So idea of mining nodes of mimic you know what mimic mining nodes is a good idea don't let's forget that so 2 p.m cst okay cool so keep an eye out for that um and then we'll do it it's been a while since we've done one so but i can type again mostly so uh we'll get it done and it'll be a fun one uh, but for for real, if you've never seen a, one of the brainstorms in action, um, check our playlist. I'm fairly certain we've got a we've got that on a playlist. Let me. Let's see. Yeah, you'll find it if it's there. You'll find it. Cool. All right. So now is the time that we say goodnight. I'm going to say goodnight, get ready for bed um, so I can get up at a decent hour. Um, by decent hour, that probably is like 5.30 or 6 a.m. So my wife gets up pretty early. Um, and do some actual work work. Um, Good night. Hey, it's Milton Me. I don't think I've ever said that name out loud before. Are you new here? Good on you if you are. So, Milton, me, good night. Zukin, good night. Be more gaming. Have a good one. Liz Biscuits, good night. Sandayu, see ya. John, see ya, buddy. Umanji, glad you're here. Enduro, yeah, man, we we keep it pretty lighthearted in here. Sometimes we talk about some actual industry shit or making the game. A lot of times we're just I'm telling crazy stories. Good night, Simon. Keith G, see ya, Nicodemus, see ya, sir. Dark inside. Good night. Hell, Dracula. Good night, Talet. Ciao, Robert Helsinki. Yes, don't don't let me forget to that ping me in the morning and see what's going on. See you, Justin Beard, Corvid, Stunalistic. If you can't be good, be good at it. That was the theme for tonight, I think. Lich, see you, buddy. Drew ATX, good to meet you. Glad you could be in here. Darius, see you. Is Nova. Bye. Um, Ali, you should be in bed, buddy. It's super late on your end. Night Goblin, Zinfar, take care, McNarf. See you later. Nothing like a good pinging in the morning. You know it, especially from Robert. We need a sign off emote. Isn't that what all the kids are doing? I've got, I've got, I've got like a. Oh, fun fact, if you look at my robot emote, it's only got four fingers. And if you look on the website, my robot hand on the on my profile picture on our team page, four fingers. Now look at where we're at. It's Ramadan, Ramadan, no sleep. I did not think that was part of the rules. I thought it was just no eat during the day. I think that, wasn't that a, didn't Gwen, Gwen Stefani do that song for Ramadan? No sleep. Cause you are not eating. All right. Um, it's late. I'll see you guys on Friday. I will see the team tomorrow. Everybody be safe. See you then.
before Eminem Sean and post launch Eminem Sean because that was high. <laughs> Just getting younger. I'm I'm like fucking Benjamin Button. Alright. Megaton, see you. See you guys.